Hi, my name is Seti and welcome back to the channel where we make educational technology easy for you. In today's video, we're going to be going into our Google Calendar and I'm going to show you all you need to know about the new appointment scheduling feature. Now, this is a way that you can set out blocks of time and have people schedule appointments with you. Now, I know you're saying, okay, maybe we already had that. It was called appointment slots. Well, this one is much, much better. Now, if you've seen this in my previous video, this will be a deep dive into this new feature. And if you're brand new to it, let's get started by opening up our Google Calendar. Now here I'm in my Google Calendar and by default, everything is still set to use appointment slots. So let me show you what the old version looks like first, and then we'll show you the new version. Now in the previous version of this feature, you were able to select a chunk of time and then here under appointment slots, create those individual slots that people can book. You can select their duration. Let's say that you want to have slots of 15 minutes and then you clicked on save. This would then create a booking page or an appointment page. And this is what you would share with parents or students, allowing them to book in a time slot. Now, as you can see, it's not very user friendly. It looked very messy, bulky. Now, clearly I'm not the only one that was thinking this because Google has completely redesigned this and created a appointment schedule feature. So that's the key difference. These are the appointment slots. We want to be using appointment schedules. Now, where do I find these? Because whenever I'm selecting time here, I don't have it as an option. And that is because you have to first activate this in your settings. So we're going to open up our calendar settings, click on that settings menu, settings. Now we're going to scroll down or here on the left hand side and we can select appointment schedules. This is a feature that is going to replace the old appointment slots. So in order to use this, go ahead and tick the box right here, create appointment schedules instead of appointment slots. That setting has been saved. We can now safely go back to our calendar. Let's do the same thing now, but let's create appointment schedules. I'm going to again, select a chunk of time. Let's select this block here. And now instead of slots, we have those schedules here. Now you will notice that these look different. You can see here, it says, okay, add a new appointment schedule. We have to create that on a separate page. So let's just call this check in with myself. There we go. And we are going to click on continue. And now we get so many more options that we can tweak to make this booking page a personalized page that works for us. So the first thing is how long are your various appointments going to be? Well, I'm going to make them 15 minutes. Now we can't go lower than 15, 15 is the minimum. So hopefully that is something that will change because we do sometimes have five minute or 10 minute check-ins at the moment it's set to 15. So I'm going to select 15. And then we have sort of our availability. So do we want to be available on more than just one day? If you do want to do that, then you can always click on that plus icon here and you can add an additional period. So here, for example, on Monday, I'll be available from nine till let's say 12 PM. So we're going to select that. And then on Thursday, we'll leave it as we've selected on our calendar. I'm going to scroll down. Now we have some options about the scheduling window, and this is important because maybe you do not want to make this available yet. Maybe you have parent consultations and you want everyone to be able to schedule in their appointment starting from the same time. So for example, we open our parent consultation booking Wednesday at 1 p.m. And we can set that up here. So for example, if I select start and end dates, I can say when this opens up, and when it ends. So the people have a limited booking window to sign up for an appointment. I'm going to cancel that for now. I am going to change this to the maximum time in advance. I don't want people to book 60 days in advance. Let's say, okay, we can book about 20 days in advance and the minimum time before the appointment, I want to get sort of a couple of hours to prepare myself. So I want them to book at least 12 hours before the actual appointment. Now here under adjusted availability, you can have exceptions. So let's say that you have a holiday Well, you can always click on change the dates availability. So for example, here we have this Monday and Thursday, but I don't want to be available Monday the 25th. So I'm going to just change that. I'm on a holiday. So we're going to change the Monday the 25th availability. I'm going to say that I am unavailable all day long. And so we can add that in. We can have our holidays added as well. 
Scrolling down, we have our booking appointment settings. And this is an important one, especially for consultations, to add in a buffer time. And this is the buffer time in between the different appointments. So here, let's add in a buffer time of, let's say, five minutes. Let's give ourselves five minutes between each appointment. And then also have a maximum number of bookings per day. I'm not going to set this up, but you could limit yourself to say maximum five people a day. I don't see more than five or maybe 10 or 20. It's completely up to you. You can set that up here. The color is just the color that this event will have on your calendar. So if you wanted to choose green, for example, then all those appointment schedules on your calendar will show up in that green color. Let's go ahead and click on next. And now we're talking more about what it will look like. So here we have our booking page photo and name. Do we want to display that or do we want to change that? This is what it will look like at the moment. I'm okay with that. This is a demo account. This is what it will display. You can also add in a location or conferencing. Let's say that these are virtual meetings. Well, let's go ahead and select Google Meet. This will then automatically create a Google meeting for each individual appointment that has been booked. We can add in a description. This could be a reminder of what you expect people to bring or what you would like them to have available with them for that meeting, or maybe just a quick little description of what that appointment is all about. And then we have our booking form. Now the booking form by default will have three questions. First name, surname, and then also their email address. You can add in additional questions and this will be filled out by people as they are booking an appointment. So for example, if it's a parent consultation, maybe you also want to add in the name of the child and that child's class. Now at the moment, we have a maximum of four questions that are asked and so we can't add in both the year group and the student, unless we of course change this and say year group and student name. There we go, save that, and then parents will be prompted to fill this out. We can scroll down and we can also set up our booking confirmations and reminders. This will work similar to the invitations and reminders of Google Calendar in general. So we can have a email reminder one day before, and then we can add another reminder 10 minutes before. So let's say that that reminder one day before is a bit much. Maybe let's change that and let's remind them three days before. And then again, 30 minutes before. That way they get a email three days ahead of time and then another one 30 minutes before the meeting is going to take place. Let's go ahead and click on save. And this has now been set up. So as you can see here, we can still tweak it afterwards. We can click on that little pencil symbol to tweak it, change it, or we can click on the open booking page. And as you can see from this booking page, the interface of appointment schedules is much more user friendly. We have our different days that we are available here on the calendar. We can switch between these, as you can see, and we can book these various time slots, taking into consideration that buffer time we've set up. So let's say that I want to book in this 10 a.m. I would click on that, and then I get those four questions that I've set up as individual items. So you can see here, first name, last name, email address, and then year group and student name. And so parents will be prompted to fill this out. Once set up, it automatically creates the event. So let's go ahead and do that now. We're just going to type in SETI and then I'm going to say demo student and year five. Let's go ahead and book. And there we go. It is all set up. It is shared with the person. We can close that and that slot is no longer available on this booking page. It has just been removed from the booking page and parents no longer see that. So the appointment schedules feature is incredibly useful. Now, as the person who set up this appointment schedule, I can also see who has already booked. So for example, here, I can see that this has already been booked. When I click on it, I also see who has booked this and scrolling down, I get that information that I requested in that form. So a great way of setting up virtual conferences, check-ins with students, or maybe even just drop-in sessions or training. Now, I hope you found this helpful. If you did, make sure to subscribe to the channel, leave a like down below. How would you use this in class and with students and parents? Let me know in that comment section below. In the meantime, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.